Hi, this is Mark Johnston, AZ Astro Guy. And today in this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up your solar telescope to capture fabulous pictures of the sun, both in white light and hydrogen alpha. So let's get started. First, let's make sure your laptop is in the shade. Nothing more difficult than trying to see a screen when you're fighting with the sun. Second, check the seeing. Excellent seeing makes a huge difference. Don't attempt solar photography if the seeing is poor. I generally only try to image the sun if the seeing is a four or a five. Astrospheric is a great tool. A good time for solar imaging is very early in the morning before the breezes start. You also want to avoid observing over buildings, parking lots, any kind of heat sinks or sources. Grass, forest, water, and snow in the foreground is the best, and also it's great to be at a high altitude. And ensure alignment is good, especially if doing full disc or animations. Wait for calm air to capture, or use the sharp cap seeing function, which I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. Let's go over some general guidelines for using sharp cap. First, you want to use the 64-bit version of sharp cap. You want to be sure that you are set to capture an SER, not an AVI file, because you want to get the maximum resolution. You want to have one by one binning, and you want to collect 16-bit data for the most resolution. Going to 8-bit data does increase your data rate, but does not offset the decrease in quality at 8-bit. It's good to try to select a region of interest or a capture area that's roughly square. Now in my case here, if I go to a square one, uh, I can just barely get the sun in. So I have to be very careful to align it properly. So you can see 1200 by 1200 in this case with this telescope and camera, I've got a good square uh, region of interest. You want to be sure you have at least a 60 frames per second data rate, capture rate, so you can get enough frames fast enough and see the detail. This will depend on the region of interest size, your gamma, your camera, focal length, PC power, and USB cable. It's always good to take flats after focusing or changing focal length. Let's look at how we capture flats when doing solar photography. First, we take our flat cap panel, which is basically frosted glass, and we put it over the end of the objective. And now we're going to go back to sharp cap. Okay, so now that we have the flat cap panel on there, you'll probably see nothing on the screen because there's so much attenuation of light. So you need to increase your gain significantly. And let's go up here and say capture flat. And now I'm going to get a uh, opportunity to see a histogram here. So we want to get the histogram at the point where it's about 50%. So let me just see if I can... 100. Okay, there we go. 207. So let's make that maybe 160, and that's close enough. You want to be around 50%, and you want to try to capture 25 to 30 flat frames. So we'll say start. Sharp cap will capture this automatically, and then it will average them and apply them to your subsequent pictures. So it's already done, and it's going to be stored in sharp cap under pre-processing here, where it says apply flat. Now we're going to remove the flat cap panel and get into some photography. Set the offset on the 174 camera to be approximately four so that you get some detail in the darkest areas. If you're using a Barlow lens for more magnification, you can increase the offset to 10 to 15. And for the histogram, you want to be sure the histogram is filled to about 80%. So I can go perhaps a bit more on the exposure time. So in this case, because I've got so much light coming in, I have a zero gain and about a two millisecond exposure. Now I'm all set to start capturing. So here's our nice view of the sun after applying the flat. We can see there are some active sunspot regions on the sun today and some granulation up here. We're probably gonna put a Barlow lens on to get a closer look at these areas here. It's worth noting that when you do a flat, the flat is only applicable for one capture area. So if you change your capture area,
then you're going to have to redo the flats. So now I put in a 2.5 power mate from Teleview, that's a Barlow lens essentially, and I'm zooming in on this area of sunspots on the sun. The seeing at the moment is not great, but you can see the, uh, the umbra, the penumbra, you can see some pores, and you can see some granulation in the background here. So the process we're going to follow here essentially is to be sure the focus is right, you want to set your exposure and the gain properly, and generally the exposure you want to keep at 10 milliseconds or less, so the effects of seeing are minimized. Maybe with the Barlow you can go as high as 12 milliseconds, but nothing beyond that. And for focusing, what I tend to do is use the zoom and zoom to a very high number and then bring my laptop over to the telescope and do a fine focus until I get the best result that I can see. Generally speaking, you want to capture about 30 seconds of data. The exception would be if you're using the seeing monitor. So let's talk about the seeing monitor. There's a function in SharpCap here under Tools called Seeing Monitor. I'm going to select that. You can take the region of interest and put that you know, adjust the size to fit around the area you're interested in. And then what the software will do, I can reset it, is it'll give you a seeing indication. Now poor seeing would be three or below, perhaps. And so this seeing actually isn't too bad. You can see the instantaneous value with the red line, and then the, the average with the mean, and the mean and two standard deviations is up here. So what I can do is I can say I want to capture a thousand frames, and I want every frame to be at least, let's call it, uh, 13.5 or better. Now, the seeing is actually getting better as we're talking here, but um, let's put it there now, so 13.75 roughly, and say start, and now you can see that it's capturing frames and dropping frames, and the frames that are being dropped are the ones that are less than the uh, level that I set here, about 13.75, and when I get to a thousand, it's going to stop automatically, and I will have captured a thousand frames, and I will have thrown away the ones that are less uh, in focus. I can change this to make it uh, for a higher number, for example, 3,000 frames, because we're going so quickly at about 100 frames per second. And I'll start this again. Now notice how the threshold has gone down here. The seeing has improved in the last few moments. I'm going to take it up to 14.05, uh, say start. And now we're going to capture 2,000 frames at that level. In my next video, I'm going to show you how you can process these to give you the best look. But this is all about capturing. And you can move this dynamically too if, you're, uh, if your sun is drifting a little bit, if you're not perfectly aligned. And you can see uh, what's happened here. The seeing has dropped significantly from where we started. So I'm going to lower my threshold dynamically during the same capture. And uh, now we'll speed things up and we should have 3,000 frames very shortly and we'll be done. Okay, let's look at hydrogen alpha. Here you can see the scope has been reconfigured for hydrogen alpha mode. I've got the double stack set up and my QHY camera attached. And now let's take a look and see how things look on the screen. So here's the same sun we saw earlier, now in hydrogen alpha. And you can see the same sunspot region we saw before the twin sunspots, a great deal of more information. You can see a lot of detail here with filaments and uh, solar flares on the limb and uh, another filament down here. A lot of active going, a lot of information here. I've already run a flat to flatten out the exposure on the surface. And if I want to see where the prominences are, I can simply go to the histogram and pull the center slider to the left. And that's going to overexpose the sun. And you can see what the prominences are here. Not a lot going on, but there are some things that we can look at later. And in post-processing, we're going to make those things pull out, despite the fact you don't see them very well uh, in this view. As far as my settings are concerned, I want to have a capture rate at least 60 frames per second. I do that by minimizing the, the ROI, so I'm using the minimum black space possible. I've also got a histogram about 70 to 80 percent full, and I didn't want to go higher than 10 milliseconds, and so I've got 10 milliseconds and about 70 gain, what it worked out here. Your mileage will vary based on your scope and your one of the tricks in solar photography is trying to capture the seeing so that it doesn't blur your image. And so some rules of thumb for a 100 millimeter scope that I've got here, for example, maximum of about three minutes of capture for a full disc, maybe 60 seconds if you're looking at granulation, 40 seconds for prominences, and about 30 seconds for spicules. You want to decrease that 
amount of time for larger aperture telescopes and you can increase it for less aperture telescopes. You can also experiment with single stack versus double stack on prominences. The increased brightness allows for shorter exposures and better freezing of turbulence, but you will see less surface detail, which may not be important if you want to look at the prominence. Today there isn't much going on on the limb, so we're going to focus on the disc. As far as focusing is concerned, what I tend to do is I get my telescope connected, I get a rough focus, and then I'll increase the gain significantly, and then I'll find an area of interest on the sun where there's something that I can look at, say for example here, and then I will tweak the focus back and forth until I get it as close as I can to sharpness. And then I know that I'm focused. After I'm focused, I'll do my flats, and then we'll carry on to start capturing the exposures. We can do the same trick that we did before, where you can use the seeing monitor. So let's recenter the sun a little bit here. Okay, and then what I can do is I can go under tools, seeing monitor, and I can look for an area of interest. Let's say this area right here. And uh, now you can see that I'll do a reset to clear that out. We're running around uh, 12, which is not bad. It's, I would say that's, that's good. That's not very good or excellent, but it's good. So I can set my seeing capture at a minimum of, let's say 11.9, and I wanna capture a thousand frames and say, start. And now it's only going to capture the frames that are better than 11.9 seeing. And you can see the latest value now has dropped from where it was when I started bouncing around a lot. But we're counting up frames. You can see how many are dropping and how many are capturing. The, uh, the seeing function will also cause your frame rate to drop a little bit as it's dropping. If you're dropping a lot of frames, you're going to capture less frames per second, obviously. But we're done already. So now we have a thousand captured. And you can do, obviously, shorter amounts to get a much faster capture. So there's only 500. If I run that, you can see it's capturing very quickly. And we'll soon be done. There we go. We're done. Hope that was helpful. And if you like that, subscribe. I'm going to do more videos like this later. Thanks for watching.